Can you imagine being caught up to meet him, whether on this side or the other side of the veil? That is his promise to the righteous. This amazing experience will mark our souls forever. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of the Spiritual Survival Podcast. I'm your host, Randy Brown. Our team's mission is to help you have eyes to see the times we are living in, take unprecedented measures, and prepare yourself spiritually for the events that will precede the second coming of Jesus Christ. If the mission of our podcast resonates with you, please click subscribe, like, and share this content. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back. This is Spiritual Survival, and I'm your host, Randy Brown. The uh, thoughts that I'd like to share today, uh, I I think are, are somewhat sacred, and I hope that I can express them adequately. Um, some of it will come from the, the Come Follow Me block of this week, but not all of it. And uh, like always, I appreciate your comments. I pr- I'll probably ask a lot of questions again today, and I would love for you to go to um, go to the comment section and and uh, write a comment, post your your thoughts, your feelings. Um, would love for this to be again much more of a discussion than than just a presentation. Um, I'd like to start off with a question that. Uh, I'd love it if you just go straight to the comment section and ask and answer this, or maybe this is one that's more, more one to ponder. But the question is this, in the coming day, will you be caught up to meet him? And this is based on uh, Alma 29, where Alma says, oh, that I were an angel. So, uh, I think we're familiar with with this quote. It's been quoted a lot. I've probably <clears throat> quoted it numerous times on the podcast. Um, President Nelson has stated, in coming days, we will see the greatest manifestations of the Savior's power that the world has ever seen. He will bestow countless privileges, blessings, and miracles upon the faithful. And that was from uh, October 2022 General Conference. So what are these manifestations of power? Um, Share your thoughts. What do you think these manifestations of power are that uh, President Nelson is referring to? And what are these these privileges, blessings, and miracles that are going to be uh, coming upon the faithful? That's that's the direction I want to go in today. Um, this is also uh, from President Nelson. This was in the April 2020 General Conference. <clears throat> he was uh, speaking of Joseph Smith as the prophet of this last dispensation, <clears throat> and he said, "In this last dispensation, this is the last dispensation when nothing shall be withheld from the saints." That's a really interesting uh, statement. And then he followed up by saying, Revelation continues to flow from the Lord during this ongoing process of restoration. So as you uh, think about those two comments and combine them together, here's my next question. What what is he referring to? What, What is it that's yet to be restored that will not be withheld from the saints or cannot be withheld from the saints. Um, It sounds to me like there are uh, things still to be restored. Um, um, Things that, you know, the the righteous, those that are in covenant, those that are honoring temple covenants um, will, will experience and that will be opened up to them. So last week, I had uh, Eric Muehlstein with me, and we talked about a pattern in the Book of Mormon. It was the pattern 
um, demonstrated by the sons of Messiah and how they are um, a pattern of our end time roles. And the, the, the Book of Mormon is, is just full of patterns and types that have to do with the end time. That's um, that's the uh, Hebrew way of prophesying is to uh, use something from the past as a type of what's going to happen um, usually at the, at the end of uh, at the second coming of Christ or sometimes at the first the first coming of Christ. So the Book of Mormon is revealing uh, these patterns for our end time missions and uh, but we need to have eyes to see them. So I want to kind of build on what we talked about last week and this week I want to talk about another pattern that's revealed by it revealed in the experiences of Alma the Younger. And here's kind of a, a hint of where I'm hoping to go with this. This is from Jeremiah 16, verse 6. He says, Behold, I will send many fishers, saith the Lord, and they shall fish them. And after will I send many hunters, and they shall hunt them from the mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. So who are these fishers and uh more specifically, who are the hunters? I think we'll answer that as we move through today, but go ahead and share a comment um, as to who you feel the fishers and the hunters are. <clears throat> um, this is also from President Nelson. Um, it's just been so amazing, you know, since President Nelson's been the prophet, I've uh, been hearing him say things that I just think are so full of prophecy um, they open up the scriptures. Um, also in April 2020, from this same talk called Hear Him, he said, we have front row seats to witness what the prophet Nephi saw only in vision, that the power of the Lamb of God would descend upon the covenant people of the Lord, who are scattered upon all the face of the earth, and they were armed with righteousness and with the power of God in great glory. <clears throat> This is uh, from 1 Nephi 14, 14. It says, and it came to pass that I, Nephi, beheld the, the power of the Lamb of God. <clears throat> so I ask you, what, what is that power? What is the power of the Lamb of God? That it descended upon the saints of the church of the Lamb and upon the covenant people of the Lord who were scattered upon all the face of the earth. And they were armed with righteousness and with the power of God in great glory. So what is the power of God in great glory? And I would, I would love your thoughts on, on what that means. <clears throat> um, Alma the Younger's experiences provide us with a pattern that might be an answer to that question. We're, we're, we're <laughs> Alma and Nephi kind of talking about the same thing. Um, and and is, is that what Nephi saw? So here's the 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 two verses I kind of like to base everything in this particular episode on. And again, this is from our, our block of uh, Come Follow Me uh, scriptures this week. This is Alma 29, and I've always loved this, um, but it's only been the last few years that I've come to see it at a deeper level. Alma says, oh, that I were an angel. I've highlighted the word angel. <clears throat> And could have the wish of mine heart that I might go forth and speak. Um, I've highlighted speak because that has that word is a, a linking word that's going to have a lot of deep meaning. Speak with the trump of God and with a voice to shake the earth and cry repentance unto every people. Yea, I would declare unto every soul as with the voice of thunder repentance and the plan of redemption that they should repent and should come unto our God, that there might not be sorrow upon the face of the earth. So how do these words link together, um, speak, voice, declare, and uh, <clears throat> how do they tie into a prophecy in the end time? So uh, Alma the Younger's life, I believe, definitely gives us a pattern that we need to be aware of. Um, it starts off with his... Uh, his repentance process, 
when he had an angel actually come to him. Um, a powerful angel that, that that had such an effect over him that caused him to uh, experience the depths of humility, to experience the, the depths of hell, and recognize his need to be born again. And uh, once that had occurred, his greatest wish was to be able to do the same thing for others. And so here he's he's asking and wishing uh, to, to have that same power, to have the trump of God. And we'll talk what that means, the trump of God, to have a voice to shake the earth. We're going to talk about that. <clears throat> um as we talked about last week, you know, ascending the spiritual ladder that uh, he's desiring to ascend to the level of an angel or a seraph and to have the gift of translation. And again, all those things have to do with uh, our end time role. Alma is pleading in these verses for the convincing power, that very same thing that uh, the sons of Messiah had when they converted uh, King Lamoni and his father. And the power of translation, the trump of God, the fullness of priesthood power. Uh, I hope to elaborate on all of those uh, <clears throat> here as we go through. So uh, we talked about this a little bit last week, how uh, <clears throat> in the book of Isaiah, he depicts a ladder of, or a hierarchy of, of people on different spiritual levels. And uh, Jacob also saw this, this ladder to heaven. And uh, we, we talked about this telestial level and, you know, becoming converted to Christ, um, being born again, uh, knowing you have a remission of your sins and how Isaiah refers to that as the, <clears throat> the Zion Jerusalem level or category of people. And uh, and then eventually uh, ascending to a celestial level and becoming the sons and daughters of God or, or servants at a, at a celestial level. And how uh, Alma desired to even go to the next level, which is the seraph level, which is uh, a level we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about. So uh, God has, God the Father made uh, an irrefutable covenant, an oath with Abraham um, that he would have seed as numerous as the sands of the sea or the stars in heaven. And that he would, in the last days, gather Israel. He would miraculously bring them back. Um, and so my question is, how is God going to fulfill his promise to deliver the house of Israel from the four parts of the earth in the darkest time the world has ever seen? And uh, I want to go into more depth about that. Here's, here's another uh, question. What is the voice of thunder? Um, this voice of thunder that uh, Alma was asking for. And that the angel that converted him had. And is this what Nephi saw for us? So uh, Doctrine and Covenants 88 talks a lot about the, the end time and about uh, the time around Adam and Diamond. And um, starting in, in verse 90, um, he says, and also cometh the testimony of the voice of thundering. There's that voice again and the voice of lightnings, and the voice of tempests, and the voice of the waves of the sea heaving themselves beyond their bounds. And all things shall be in commotion, and surely men's hearts shall fail them, for fear shall come upon all people, and angels shall fly through the midst of heaven, crying with a loud voice. There's that word voice. Sounding the trump of God, saying, Prepare ye, prepare ye, O inhabitants of the earth, for the judgments of our God um anyway the just wanted to point out um that they're, they're calling for us to go out and the, the, the bridegroom cometh and to go out and meet him but uh, again these 
these words like voice of lightnings, voice of tempest, voice of waves, um, trump of God are, are prevalent. So uh, what is the testimony of the voice of thunderings? So we just talked about how Alma desired to ascend to this seraph level. Um, this is a level where um, it, it's an angelic level where they possess uh, power over the elements, the sealing power. And uh, they speak when they speak, they speak with such power that uh, they can shake the earth. They can bring destruction. Um, so they, they speak with the voice of thunder, the voice of lightnings, the voice of tempests, and the voice of the waves of the sea. So the destruction in the end time is actually the voice of seraph level beings. And th this comes after the testimony of the missionaries. So could it be that the, the missionaries as we know them now are the fishers? And these seraph level beings that Alma was wanting to be a part of are actually the hunters. So again, the, the trump of God, it's, it's this tremendous power in the language of seraphs or mighty angels. Um, it's a voice that can shake the earth. And it, this isn't just metaphorical. It actually can cause earthquakes. <clears throat> so in answer to our earlier questions, the, the hunters that are referred to in, in Jeremiah would be mighty angels at the seraph level. And these are translated beings. Um, and they speak with this voice of thunder, voice of lightnings. Um, so as we kind of try to pull this together, is, is this the power that Nephi saw descending upon the saints? So when Nephi said, I uh, saw the power of God in great glory coming upon the saints, um, could it be that this is the, the power to become a translated being in the end time? Is it the power to ascend to that seraph level? and have that type of power to go out and gather Israel in the darkest time the world has ever seen because of the power. Um, is this the power that President Nelson was referring to? And he says, the, you know, in the coming days, we'll see the greatest manifestations of the Savior's power. Is this what he was alluding to? Um, I would point everyone to go... Uh, Read Genesis 14 and the Joseph, the Joseph Smith translation of Genesis 14. Um, here he talks about this, this power of translation. Um, and in verse 30, it says, For God having sworn unto Enoch and unto his seed with an oath by himself. So remember you see uh, God speaking with an oath. This is, this is something that will absolutely be fulfilled. And uh, so who was Enoch? Enoch was a, a translated being, and his people uh, were translated, <clears throat> and they were, they were spared from the destruction that happened upon the earth at the time of the flood. It seems to me that they would be very interested in um, this destruction that's coming at the end time upon the earth, uh, when the earth is burned. Um, and that they would be very concerned in, in helping to prepare uh, people. And so it says, uh, God swore this, this oath unto Enoch, but also to his seed. I want to talk a little bit about who that's, who are the, the seed of Enoch. Um, anyway, the verse goes on that, that everyone being ordained after this order and calling should have power by faith to break mountains Okay, this is uh, very, uh, this is power over the elements. This is what we call sealing power. Sometimes we think of sealing power as just, you know, what a sealer has in the temple. But <clears throat> sealing power is to be able to uh, essentially have the power of a god. Um, to divide the seas, to dry up waters, to turn them out of their course, to put at defiance the armies of nations, to divide the earth 
to break every band, to stand in the presence of God. This is what a seraph level being has the power to do. And we know that they stand in the presence of God um, to do all things according to his will. So this power that, that a seraph possesses isn't something that they can just go using uh, willy-nilly. It, it has to be. Uh, well, the Lord gives it to him because he knows they will never use it um, in any way except according to his will. According to his command, <laughs> subdue principalities and powers. So during this darkest time the world has ever seen, when the uh, king of Assyria is, is ruling the earth, the end-time Antichrist, <clears throat> and there will need to be um, these seraph-level beings um, who will be able to subdue principalities and powers. And, and this by the will of the Son of God, which was before the foundation of the world. And men having this faith, coming up to this order of God, were translated and taken up to heaven. So what is this order that I've highlighted in red? Um, how do we come up unto this order? Um, who are Enoch's seed? Who are those who are translated and taken up? Um, would love your comments <clears throat> in the comment section. So who are the seed of Enoch? Um, I would say that the seed of Enoch are all who enter into this order, this order of uh, celestial um, seraph level beings and the order of translated beings. This is from Alma 45. And when Alma had done this, he departed out of the land of Zarahemla as if to go into the land of Melech. And it came to pass that he was never heard of more. As to his death and burial, we know not of. Behold, this we know, that he was a righteous man. And the saying went abroad in the church that he was taken up by the Spirit, or buried by the hand of the Lord, even as Moses. So we, we know that Alma, Alma was translated. He got the wish of his heart. And he received the same level of power that Moses possessed and other translated beings. And these are, these are the seraphs. But behold, the scripture saith that the Lord took Moses unto himself. And I put that in blue because we just asked this question, who are the, who are the seed of Enoch? I would say that the, that would include Moses. That would include Alma. That would include Elijah. That would include John. Um, the three Nephites, um, many, many from the Book of Mormon. And uh, and we suppose that he also received Alma in the spirit unto himself. Therefore, for this cause, we know nothing concerning his death and burial. <clears throat> so if you look at the Book of Mormon, as you're going through it this time with this lens, uh, why has this been included? If, if Mormon and Moroni carefully selected a hundredth part of all their records to put in the Book of Mormon for us for our day, they having seen our day and knowing what's coming and knowing of this power and great glory that we're going to need to have that Nephi saw, that Alma experienced, um, then you, you begin to have eyes to see um, that the Book of Mormon is a warning, a witness and a warning and a powerful prophecy that helps us understand why we came at this time. And I know for many of you who are part of this listening audience, <clears throat> you've you've felt this call. You've you've uh, felt these things, and it's uh, I think it's very uh, um, validating to see these these things. Uh, given to us in patterns in the Book of Mormon. So can we become the seed of Enoch? Like Alma did. I mean, why would it have been included for us? Could we really have been saved for such a glorious mission? Um, I just, uh, this just resonates with me so powerfully. And I think if it resonates with you, it's because uh, this is who you were 
in, in pre-mortality. This is what you signed up for. This is uh, this was your calling. And so this is this is from Revelation 10. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head. And his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. So that word fire, that, that's a linking word to, ser to a, a seraph level being. They're, they're called the fiery ones. <clears throat> and he had in his hand a little book open. And he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot upon the earth. And he cried with a loud voice. There's the voice again. Um, this, is, this is that power of language that these the seraph level being has. Um, and the verse goes on, as when a lion roareth. And that's actually a key word. If you look up the roaring of the lion, it, that is referring to to seraph level beings as well. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. So seven thunders is referring to seven angels, seven angelic beings or seven seraph level beings with this um, voice of thunder. Seven thunders uttered their voices. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered and write them not. <clears throat> and the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven. Um, and so great was the faith of Enoch that he led the people of God and their enemies came to battle against them. And he spake the word of the Lord. And the earth trembled, and the mountains fled, <clears throat> even according to his command. And the rivers of water were turned out of their course, and the roar of the lions was heard out of the wilderness, and all nations feared greatly. So powerful was the word of Enoch, and so great was the power of the language which God had given to him. <clears throat> so here again, this, this is from the book of Moses. We're hearing about the, the roar of the lions, the, the power of their language, that Enoch had this. <clears throat> so great was the power of God, which, which God had given unto Enoch. And these are the blessings that will come upon the seed of Enoch, which I believe very strongly are um, us in the last days who desire it, who feel called to it and um, are doing everything we can to... Uh, receive the power in our temple covenants. Here's a quote by uh, Henry Eyring. He said, as the forces around us increase in intensity, whatever spiritual strength was once sufficient will not be enough. So I, I think that's very telling. It's, there's going to be a time when the spiritual strength of, you know, that we, we've been used to is just not going to cut it anymore. And whatever growth in spiritual strength we once thought possible greater growth will be made available to us. Both the need for spiritual strength and the opportunity to acquire it will increase at rates which we under, which we underestimate at our peril. So the, the whole reason this podcast is named Spiritual Survival <clears throat> is because we want to talk about how do we survive the days ahead? And I submit that one of those ways is we have to ascend spiritually up the spiritual ladder. And I think the tribulations that are coming and that we've already entered into to some extent, um, we've definitely entered into them, are going to be a, a major part of us recognizing what Henry Eyring, uh, President Eyring, is saying here that uh, the spiritual strength that we've leaned upon to this point is not going to be enough. I think President Nelson is saying that very, very clearly. And uh, greater, greater power is going to be made available to us. And uh, Doctrine and Covenant Section 88, um, again, talks a lot about the, the end times and the time 
in and around Adamondi Almond when the Savior will appear here on the American continent. Um, verse 96, and the saints that are upon the earth who are alive shall be quickened and be caught up to meet him. So what does that mean, caught up to meet him? Um, if you and I are amongst the saints that are alive at this time of Adam and Naaman, um, there's going to be a quickening. And we're going to be caught up to meet him. Um, I personally feel like that is um, being caught up into a, a higher dimension, uh, caught up to a celestial uh, level of being, from a terrestrial to a celestial. Um, so I, I maybe recommend uh, doing a word search for caught up to meet him. Um, this will definitely be part of those who are the seed of Enoch. Um, but also those who, you know, who resurrect at that time. Can you imagine being caught up to meet him, whether on this side or the other side of the veil? That is his promise to the righteous. This amazing experience will mark our souls forever. That, uh, I would love my soul to be marked in that way forever. Um, and I just, I just feel like I, I see this so clearly now in the Book of Mormon and the Book of Isaiah. And uh, would love your your thoughts on this. Uh, again, I think the the scriptures are telling us very plain, very clearly that the saints that are upon the earth, and there will be many, be many who won't be here anymore. There will be a cleansing. Uh, but the saints that are alive and they're upon the earth, and this. The saints at the time of Adam on Diamon. This is when the, the Savior will unveil his face, that we will be quickened and we will be caught up to meet him. Thank you for being with us on the Spiritual Survival Podcast. Again, if the mission of our podcast resonates with you, please click subscribe, like, and share this content.